Hess is a, is a big friendly giant, really. Um, you know, nicest guy. You know, when we we're in Rico, and um, there were a few experiences in terms of funny sorts of experiences in the changing sheds um, when we used to do extras and go back to our changing grounds at, at Rico. So it's the BB gun story, isn't it? Yeah, it's the BB gun story, which sticks out to my mind. So you tell it, man, and I'll, I'll, I'll add some details. Well, Hess is a big prankster anyway. One day Hess comes in and he's got a BB gun and we're just sitting there and then um, he starts shooting them. He shoots maybe one of the cleaners, I'm not sure, but um, he hides around the corner and all of us are like just pretending we didn't know what happened. But our backs coach comes in. He's walking around and then Hess shoots him in, in the bottom. He shoots him in the ass and then he turns around. He knows it's not us, but he's looking around. With Hess's shot, he cuts his bum. Got a massive scar and his bum starts bleeding. And then he's going upstairs and he's into Lance. And then I think Lance comes down. That's um, Hess's uncle who coached us. The guy was wearing waterproof trousers, right? You know, like tight waterproof trousers. And he was like, he obviously thought he was a bit of a fashion king. He was one of the lads. So as he's walked up the stairs, I was sitting, Mars sitting on my right. And there was a barrel, like an empty barrel. And the Japanese guys, a lot of BB guns are manufactured in, in Japan. So a lot of the kids had them. I'd found this like, unbelievable gas one. I was like shooting everybody. And as the bloke's gone up the stairs, and I've shot him in the ass. You know, if you take like a, you took like a BB gun shot or a paintball, you're like, ah, like, and you get on with it. This guy was like this, ah, ah, for, for, for honestly, for like 15 minutes. Like he wouldn't go upstairs. And then and I dropped the gun in the barrel. Mars like this. Everyone's looking around. Mate, the guy's gone up to the sink and got a bit of wet tissue, pulled his things down, and he's like, Ah, ah, mate, it was so embarrassing. And it was like, you know, apart from the time that I punched someone in the face in training, I don't know if Ma remembers that, when everybody, all the old players came up to me, I had to have seven separate meetings with different members of staff because the Japanese don't, aren't, aren't very violent, right? So you don't have that kind of stuff. But they, they square up, but they don't ever do anything. And in a session, this prop squared up to me. And as soon as he went like that, I went, boom, punched him. Everybody went mad. Like, Mar came up and said, Hass, what have you done? What have you done? I was like, what do you mean? He goes, mate, they are going mad. I had to meet the coach, the, the forwards coach, the head coach, and then, the, and then the, the next guy was basically telling me off our translator, saying, look, you know, if you did that in a game, <laughs> you're going to get a red card. And the translator was shouting at me. And I honestly went, love, can you calm down? Because he's the one that's angry. Why are you like, she would have got an A, an A-level GCSE drama, sorry, A-level drama. For that performance, but mate, it was it was pretty crazy. But that when I shot the guy, there was a big inquiry, but they never they never knew who it was. And I don't think the coach works anymore because he had to retire because of a broken bottom.